Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Ballads and Tales, Journey of the Brave, the Core Edition box. This is by Amber Moon Games, plays roughly two to five players, takes about an hour per, per scenario, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game, Ballads and Tales, you are going to be setting up a dungeon crawl adventure type game. Each player is going to choose one of many different classes, as well as their starting items. They're going to be thrust into an adventure of their choice, and usually hopefully starting from the beginning and moving on. And there's also going to be a dungeon master, one who controls all the monsters and fights against the other players. That's that, this being a one versus many game. To begin the game, you're simply going to set up the main board. Each character is going to go to town and buy their items based on how much currency they have from the previous adventure, plus their starting equipment, as well as, of course, anything that that scenario requires. They'll get thrust into the adventure in some way, shape, or form, and they'll go through the story and try and attempt to complete some type of objective, whether it be to save or rescue somebody or protect somebody or uh, destroy some type of monster or some objective location. And if they can do that at the end of the game without being being completely eliminated, they win. We'll talk about the setup, how to play, and of course my review. So normally in the uh, setup portion, I will show up the complete setup of the game and how what you need and all that kind of thing. But this game is very, very dynamic and you can kind of choose what you want as the adventurers. And as the dungeon master, you're going to take the adventure booklet and you are going to turn to the page of the adventure. And based on that adventure, you're going to follow the setup on the right hand side of the page. And this will tell you what your dungeon or setting is going to look like. So in Instead, I'm just going to briefly explain what it is that's going to be happening. The first thing is, while the players select their character, as well as their standee, they're also going to go to shop and use the currency that they have on the back of their character board and any currency that they might have from other adventures, and they're going to choose items. And items all have a cost on the middle right, as well as a sell and a buy value, and then their stats and, of course, any bonus abilities. And they'll be able to purchase these guys here. As these guys are purchasing their items, and if you can use weapons uh, that are magical, you can go ahead and purchase spells as well, the Dungeon Master is going to set up the game board, and I have already set up one here. The Dungeon Master will set up a campfire location, which is where the heroes are going to begin. Any objectives, like these pitfalls that you see here, 3D terrain, as well as, of course, all the tiles. Additionally, they'll set up any monsters that are visible and any monsters that may or may not be monsters in locations that are not visible to the adventurer's eyes. There's also going to be hidden traps that the adventurer, uh, the dungeon master will set aside as well as any bonus tokens and or monsters. Some different scenarios are going to let you have additional bonus items. Like in the first one, each of the adventurers, or at least of, of the, uh, up, to, up to three, are going to be holding bombs. And these bombs are going to be used to defeat these little pits here. So the adventurers are going to be dealt out three bombs to be able to utilize. Uh, there's also a bunch of decks. You're going to have the deck for equipment. You're going to have a deck of cards. It's uh, like treasures that you will find along the way. There's spells and etc. etc. that you all put in their own stack, as well as hopefully a discard pile for them if need be, and a ton of tokens. There's going to be status effect tokens, health, and armor. Uh, there's going to be unique tokens that you can just simply use if you need them for any specific reason, because there are multitudes of different things that can happen in the game, and so these are kind of extra ones. And then the there's, of course, the bad guy. The bad guy is going to get a certain number of events. In this case, two of them. They'll draw from the, the bad guy events deck and a bonus equipment that they can use on one of their monsters when they spawn as a way to make them even more powerful. Um, the other thing you'll need to have is the bad guy player. The DM is going to want to have all the monster sheets, which will have all the monsters, including all of their equipment, their health and all that, etc., available to them. After you set up as the DM the board and as the adventurers, your character, the standee, and any items that you want, as long as everything else is set up and ready for you to be able to access, you're ready to play the game. While Ballads and Tales may look to be a little intimidating and daunting for new players, it's actually quite simple as to how it plays. There are four phases and only two of them are going to be mainly relevant. The first phase of the game is the start of the adventure phase, basically like the starting of turns, starting of round, in which you will do any beginning of round effects. If there are none to be dealt with, you'll just move on. And then it's player actions. Player actions take place like this. Each player will get to take their actions in full until all actions have been taken. 
You are going to get two actions for each of the characters, and if you're playing one player, one player can play with multiple characters. If you're playing three players in a DM, each player can play with one of these adventurers, etc., etc. Um, the two actions you're getting are like stars. I kind of call them sonic rings. You can use them to move, you can use them to interact with certain things, you'll be utilizing them for using specific things like fire arrows or maybe a healing mist spell. And you're basically going to use them as much as you would like. Each of your characters are going to have stats. They're going to have their melee and range attack, whether they have a dodge, uh, how much movement they have, if they need, they can drink, depending on uh, how strong they are, being able to consume alcohol. And finally, their HP, as well as any other special bonus effects. In the middle here, it just displays what type of armor and equipment that you can have. And just like most um, dungeon crawls or RPGs, you can only carry specific things for specific characters, and you can switch in between ranged and melee weapons interchangeably, which is nice as well. Uh, you, if you want to move, will spend one ring, one action point, to move your base movement, which is up to five for this character, up to four for this one, etc, etc. And then, of course, you can choose to attack if you would like. After each player takes these actions here, the DM is going to go. And the DM plays similar to the characters. Any visible unit that is evil is going to get two actions, and mainly they're going to be moving and fighting or fighting, and uh, they're only going to be the ones that obviously the players can see. However, there are a bunch of units that are hidden around the board, and the DM is allowed to use two movement points to move any of these guys. So for instance, if I'm the DM, I can choose this one guy here in the house, and I can move him two spaces, and that would be it. Or I could, of course, maybe choose to move him one space, and maybe him one space as well. Uh, DM characters function just like player characters in the fact that they can open doors and go through windows, are able to move and fight, and if they have an ability they can use one, etc, etc. After me as the DM have played my actions for my visible characters and my two actions for my non-visible characters, it goes to end of phase. End of phase functions like the beginning of phase. If there's anything that needs to be done at the end of a phase, it happens. Otherwise, back to the beginning of the round, in which case, anything at the beginning? No. Players move and attack, and then villains go as well. And it brings and repeats until one thing happens, or I guess a few multiple things. But the main thing is the heroes need to finish their quest. And the main quest for the first round is you have these holes in the ground that are popping up a bunch of kobolds. And the heroes, you have to use these bombs to throw the bombs into the uh, wells in order to stop the kobolds from coming out. And if they can get rid of all the kobold nests, as well as defeat any visible enemies, they will win the game. Heroes will lose if heroes are A, <laughs> wiped out all at once, or B, wiped out without being able to resurrect any of the other players. Typically, when you're out, you're out, but there is some unique items that will allow you to res players when they are dead or when they have fallen, basically. So don't get knocked out as players. And that's basically how you play the game. I'll go into a little bit more detail of my review as to how you use things and how uh, interactions with the board work and maybe some of the, the campaign. But just so you know, the game's really simple as far as it goes. Heroes take actions, the villains take actions. If there's a beginning or end of round effect, then it will happen. But otherwise, go until somebody completes an objective. Okay, now before I get into my review, there's a few things I want you to take into account that I have taken into account. This is a prototype. A lot of it was printed as the designers, with their own designers, printers, etc., etc. So it will not be the same quality as you see here in the final version, which most likely will mean that it will be of better quality. But, as I can see here, there is a bunch of time and love and care put into this game. All the 3D models are really cool, and everything looks to be printed out very well. In fact, the artwork for this game is excellent as well. I feel like I'm in the world because of all these unique pieces of terrain. And you can also be changing doors out. When you open a door, you'll be switching a door from one door that is closed to an open one. Some doors will be revealed as locked, so when somebody tries to open a door for an action, and they will check to see if it's locked, the DM might put a lock to in there and thusly they can no longer get in until they have a key or they may just not be able to get in period which is a unique little mechanic that I actually really enjoy. There's barricades that you can actually destroy that have about 8 HP that can house archers that are of the enemy's disposition. Mm -hmm. There are chests around the field that you can use action points to open to draw new and unique treasures that you'll be able to get. Actually, I should call it, it should be these ones here that you can use to equip or use to spend as food, etc, etc. There's a bunch of cool stuff. I really also like the hidden enemies. Sometimes they're just noise. It could be just a rat rattling around. Or, in fact, it might end up being an archer. 
uh, or maybe it is a poisonous snake. And there's a bunch of enemies that are going to be moving around the board and trying to manip manipulate where the players are able to move and how they move. Speaking of that, pit traps. All of a sudden, a hero moves onto a space that actually had a type of pit trap. You'll place that there. The hero will suffer that effect. And then afterwards, difficult terrain. Awesome. So the environment mixed with the art feels like you're playing the campaign, and it does it really, really well. Now, obviously, the only thing that they could have, could have done better for this is a bunch of 3D miniatures, etc., etc., but that gets very, very pricey, and just as to how it looks now is excellent. And one small thing, sadly for us, that I have a little, little I, had, I was sad about was the miniatures and everything are so big that showing you down uh, when I was doing a playthrough, it's hard to see everything on the board because it's all top down, and to show you on one side it would cut off half of the board as well. But that's just me as a review or they weren't small enough for me to be able to do so. Regardless though, playing the game, it's excellent. You can see everything that you need to see, you know where you need to go, all the spaces are very visible and easy to tell where you're gonna be able to move and how you're going to be able to move. Combat is very simple, but has unique twists and turns. When you move up and you want to fight in a melee combat, you can move diagonally as well, ooh, awesome. <laughs> you are going to be rolling dice based on your weapon skill, based on your character sheet, and any other bonuses. So it might be like, oh, I get a blue and a green, and I will fight the kobold, and I will roll and I will check how much my score is. And then the kobold will also get a chance to go. Maybe he has a blue and a yellow, in which case he will roll. You'll check the scores, see the difference, and that player will win. And the winner is able to move. They can actually move and maneuver around the map as they're fighting. They can get into and out of melee combat. They will maybe go into melee combat and hit, and then go back and shoot their bow. Or they can maybe shoot their bow and just avoid having to deal with the, 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 the retaliation. There's fleeing, of course. If you want to exit a battle, the enemy's going to get a chance to one-shot you, or what, not one-shot you, I should say, but uh, swing and attack at you, and you cannot defend against it, which is awesome. Um, but there's ways to avoid combat damage as well. You can use armor tokens. You'll be taking an armor token and placing it down on your board or removing it, depending on if you're the hero or the killers. But you'll go, oh, I just took five damage. Oh, I can't take that. I'm going to use my armor. And once I do, my armor is now broken. Or maybe I have no armor, but I am a, a kung fu master. I can use my black and my white die to roll to dodge the entire attack. And if I roll a dodge symbol, I'm going to be able to not only dodge the attack, but move out of the way as well. If I can't move, I take the damage. It makes sense. It works. Storyline, visually, everything like that is a lot of fun. This is an entertaining dungeon crawl. This is very thematic, and it works very well. Everyone at the table enjoyed themselves and had a great time playing. Uh, that being said, this um, on the surface is very simple and easy to understand how your turns work and all that but there's a lot of small details. One thing I really, really would like to see them include is hopefully on the back of the uh, rule books or separately for each player, a player aid. How many health does a barricade have? How much health does this little vase have? When I blow up the barrel, how much damage does it do? Oh, and doesn't it do burning? That kind of thing is going to be very relevant. And for the DM, I wanna see a sheet for uh, the traps, placing them down on the table. When do, um, I, I, I wanna see it like on, on the main sheet, I want it to show like these go down later when a player walks on them. And here's what all your traps do. And when you can use this or that. Um, speaking of the DM, really cool. <laughs> these little event cards, you can use them when they allow you to use them throughout the game, and they're going to give you a big buff. They're going to help you when you need it, so I would suggest to save it for when the encounter looks like it's turning dire for you. And then, of course, the equipment that you can use on one of your minions, making him an ultra minion, making him very powerful, which is also super cool. And I'd like to see uh, what the new other things are going to have in this game. Like, for instance, we had three different little campaigns here, and there's a lot more. Even character-wise, there's a lot more coming into ballad, Ballads and Tales. So I'm just expecting this to be a big, fat dungeon crawler, right? Uh, I'm not gonna say maybe as big as Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, but as far as the amount of stuff you're doing on a specific campaign, definitely. The different types of units, the different pieces of train, and how you can interact with a lot of things, and how some things will block line of sight and some things won't. You can be on elevated terrain, and you will just shoot in a certain distance against other players who can't see you, unless you're like right on the edge, which just all works. I just like how they thought about how it, it all kind of it would all work in reality how it works in this game, and it all makes sense when you read the rules. Uh, overall, Ballad, Ballads and Tales is an excellent dungeon crawler. It's a lot of fun for both the bad guy and the good guys. It doesn't feel like as a bad guy I'm just 
okay, my enemies have to move in this direction. This is my only choice, and I have to specifically try and attack this guy here. No, there is a lot more choices the bad guys, which makes this a way more enjoyable experience than per se the game I played, which was the Goonies, where I'm just like, okay, this has to happen. I'm just kind of like an NPC, but I can't, we can't use NPCs, you know, we can't use a robot to do this, so in fact, I have to do it. No, I actually felt like I had some autonomy in the game, and I was able to foil the heroes in certain ways, and I made mistakes. Like, oh wow, I made a huge error in judgment. It's not like I just specifically had to do this, I did it, and it was a bad option, which is amazing to feel as a DM. Overall, this is an excellent dungeon crawl. There's a lot of setup, uh, I want to see certain things like player aids, but in Overall, if my entire group is having a lot of fun playing and I'm trying to play as the big baddie and I'm also having a lot of fun, that's an A plus D dungeon crawl. If I'm not having as much fun, but I'm like trying to control the game to make sure that the heroes are having fun, that's a solid B plus. And if no one's having fun, it's an F. I would grade this at like an A, because for the most part, I really enjoyed the game and everybody else really, really enjoyed the game. Uh, and that makes me very, very happy. Throw in those player aids and you'll get yourself an A+. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Ballads and Tales, the core box, which means there's going to be a lot more content for this game as we're playing it. Oh my gosh, look at my hair, it's going everywhere. Next video, I'll have a haircut. <laughs> also check out Unfiltered Gamer board game reviews, new, unfilteredgamer.com, all right, the website. Reviews, news, all that good stuff. Kickstarter list. Oh, I just feel like my hair is just still going everywhere. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, hit that bell, notification button. Um, there's a live stream we do, which our last live stream was for Ballads and Tales. You can watch it on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Just pick the system that's working best, and uh, you can watch it from there every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. And then every Wednesday, I do a stream on Whatnot, where I sell board games. Um, and if you want to buy some cheap board games, you can have a, there's a link to my whatnot in the description below. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to battling it in bards and tales with you next time. But I'm going to win. I'm going to defeat all you heroes. H handily, yeah. <laughs>